G'day everyone. Um, I'm going to do a walk around video on my Land Cruiser. I've got a 200 series GXL, a 2018 Land Cruiser that we uh, configured, modified, uh, improved for outback travel. Um, we did a video a couple of years ago when it was brand new, but I've actually had it for a bit over three years now and I've made all kinds of incremental improvements and I've actually got it to a point now where it's settled down perfectly for the kinds of trips and activities that I do. I've had heaps of people ask me about it, I've had heaps of people ask about getting an update video um, so they can see what I've done and where I've settled and everything. So that's this video. Uh, today I'm going to walk around, I'm going to talk about all the, the changes that we've made, um, focus on the outside and on another day I'll do an inside video. So the first thing I want to talk about is the bar work of the vehicle and the protection systems that I've put in place. Uh, it was very, very important for me on this vehicle, knowing that I was going to be doing long drives, long drives in the outback, that having really good solid protective bar work was, was key for my usage. So in this vehicle, I've actually gone with um, ARB's steel bull bar and side protection bars. So a little bit heavy, but again, for the usage that I've got, if I'm, if I'm going to get into the situation where, unfortunately, I hit something, I want to make sure that I've got some protection. But also, um, and when I end up in bushy, tree top tracks and whatever else, it's good to know, um, even with a, a cutout, etc., it's good to know that if I'm going to slide into something, I'm going to brush something, I've got the strongest materials I can have to protect me. So ARB bar, um, it's winch enabled, um, and it's got the side bars as well. So let's step back and just take a look at the, the side bars. So we've got the ARB side impact, impact protection, so same thing, steel, big bars, um, as I say if I brush things or bump things there's a lot of protection there and they run along the side of the vehicle uh, right down to the side steps, we'll look at that later, but they run down to the side steps that are also have that same sort of steel in it and that runs all the way to the back of the cabin, so good protection there. I've also got bash plates underneath the vehicle. I chose to go with an alloy bash plate, so a 6mm alloy bash plate um, gives good underbody protection, um, but it's also a little bit lighter. Uh, with a vehicle like this where I've got a lot of equipment on it, I had to keep an eye on, on total weights, which I do and I've weighed the vehicle many times so I know where I am, but I've gone with alloy protection plates underneath. Um, and they work well. They've certainly done their job of, of, you know, hit enough rocks and creek beds and things like that. Um, and I know that they're doing their job. A little tip that I, I would like to share though is that um, with your underneath, your bash plates, your underneath protection, um, make sure you spend a bit of time over your first six months uh, making sure that the, uh, the bolts, the mounting screws are well fixed. Over time, we've put some rib nuts and things like that into the chassis to make sure that these bash plates stay in place. Um, corrugated roads, for example, will shake those sorts of bolts loose and through some of the training work I do um, we regularly see uh, bash plates with only one or two bolts left in it just because just because the things you're doing off in off-road uh, will uh, loosen them up so take some time uh, invest in the right bolts make sure that everything's nice and firm all right so let's take a look at this front bull bar so I said I've got an ARB bar but there's a lot of things attached to the bar so um, let's run through that so let's look at lighting Lighting's very important with uh, with an off-road setup um, I've got some great white lights on the outside here. They actually point a little bit to the side. The idea of these lights, I don't use them on the road at all. They've got their own switch. They're designed when I'm out on tracks, when I'm moving out to campsite, um, when I'm out in the desert, etc. And I need a little bit of extra visibility to the side when I'm driving. So these are just for that kind of driving. So great white lights on, uh, great white lights on the side. We come around to the front. I've got the uh, ARB Solus. Uh, spotlights. I did start this vehicle off with the intensities. When the Solus came out, they offered just a little bit more throw, a little bit more distance. I found on some of the outback Queensland roads uh, where you can just get, you know, literally kilometres of straight road in pitch darkness. There's nothing, there's nothing out there. I did a couple of drives out there and really felt that I was at the limit of my lights. So I upgraded to the ARB Sol Solus lights. They've been fantastic, so very happy with them. Um, in terms of other things in this bull bar, as I said, it's a winch bull bar. So I've got a carbon winch in there. So it's the 12,000 pound carbon winch. Um, this vehicle's heavy. When I've got a trailer on, I wanted to make sure I had a heavy enough winch that I could recover myself as well as, well as others. So I've got the carbon winch in there, but hand in hand with the winch, I've got my personalized plates mounted on a flip up bracket um, so that I can get it up out of the road. And uh, just underneath there, you'll see that that's where my winch comes out. I chose to invest in the Factor 55 Ultra Hook 
for my winch. It's a really flexible hook that gives you a number of different ways of attaching when you're doing recoveries. And I find, again, having some options when you're in different situations is really helpful. So I've got my ultra hook there with the winch. So the next thing to talk about um, in the bull bar area um, is, first of all, I've got some of these, uh, I think they call them shoe roos. So look, people ask me, you know, you've got the shoe roos on there, do they work? Um, I'm not gonna make any claims because the minute you claim something, the opposite happens. My thinking is that the idea behind them is that as you drive along anything over about 40 kilometers an hour, they're actually a whistle and they create an ultra high frequency sound. And the theory is that that sound can be heard by kangaroos and other animals and it lets them know that you're coming. Um, for 20 bucks a pair, it's really cheap insurance. If it helps me, fantastic, nothing to be lost. So I do have the shoe roos on there. Now the next thing, um, I actually have my sand flag mount on this side of the ball bar. Now the reason why I have the sand flag mount here is that um, our regulations here in Queensland and Australia is that you can't have an antenna in front of the driver, something that blocks the driver's view. So you can't have an antenna permanently mounted here. When I first built the vehicle, I had that there um, and then subsequently learnt that that wasn't the right thing to do. So I've had that moved and now I have my sand flag here. If I'm out in the Simpson Desert, I'm perfectly comfortable with putting my sand flag on this side, right? I'm in a totally different environment for that. So this side for sand flag, um, on the other side of my bull bar, I then have two mounts and two antennas set up here. The first one's my UHF antenna. Now I've got, um, I've got actually three different antennas for this. I've got a tiny little whip one that if I just want something around the city, um, I can put a little one on it, or I can just put the cap over the top of that if I want to take it off. This is my regular use antenna, but I also have a taller antenna with a higher, a higher gain that I use for when I'm on my, on my outback trips. trips. So that's UHF. The next antenna is actually for a mobile uh, phone booster. So I've got a, a cell fire device inside the vehicle which boosts your mobile signal. So if there's a little bit, of, little bit of mobile signal around, it boosts that up and gives you a little extra range. So that's the antenna for that. Likewise, I have a little whip one, but I've also got a taller one. So depending on, you know, just around the, just around the city and stuff around southeast Queensland where we live, this is perfectly fine. As soon as we get into the outback stuff, I pop the two big antennas on. So they're the antennas. So the next part um, up front here um, that I want to talk about is I mentioned I've got my bash plates underneath there. They go right underneath the engine and the transmission right back. But I've also got two ARB recovery points underneath here. And um, I've actually got both of them. I've got one on each side. Um, I highly recommend, you know, everything costs money. I get that. You can't do everything. But if you can, recovery points in particular are definitely worth investing in. And having two of them means that if you're the one being recovered, you can actually put a bridle off, a bridle strap off, and actually pull equally on both sides of the car at the same time. It's good for the vehicle, but it's also good for recovery um, because it spreads the load across your recovery equipment and the vehicle itself. So highly recommend two recovery points. All right, so let's take a look uh, underneath the bonnet. There's been a bit of work done in the, in the engine bay, so time to take a look at that. All right, now, one of the first things you'll notice, a lot of the engine bay actually looks stock. And uh, I've been very careful with the changes I've made because I really didn't want to mess with all the work that Toyota had done around the engine and the reliability, how that works. Um, I need this vehicle to go long distances and I need it to just work the way it was designed to work. Um, I've certainly had plenty of vehicles in my life where I've modified the heck out of them. But in, in this situation, um, that uh, particularly around the engine and the drive line, the, the gearbox and those things, I really just need all that work that they've done um, to work well. And everybody talks about how reliable it is and how well built it is. So a lot of it will look the same, but there's actually suddenly inside here, there's actually been a lot of extra work done. I've got um, Safari R-Max Snorkel and Safari's aftermarket ECU that's installed right here. I went with Safari. I've used Safari for over 20 years on my vehicles. They spend a lot of time on the engineering. They test a lot. They're very reliable. So I went with reliability. The R-Max um, has a large intake. It's about a four inch in, inlet type, uh, pipe. So it actually takes a lot of air into the system. Um, so that's why I went with that. For the ECU, the upgraded ECU, I went with the Safari one for a couple of reasons. Number one, it's got a button on it that allows you to change the uh, tune or the program that you've got. 
They've got a, a fuel saving mode, they've got a power mode, the party mode, everyone's got a party mode. But it's also got a towing mode, which I do a lot of for my outback trips. And it's got a low range off-road mode. So they've got a couple of different programs in there that suit different types of uses for the vehicle. But it's also got a fifth mode, which is do nothing. So it literally just lets the factory ECU do everything as what Toyota, as Toyota intended. Another really nice thing about that this ECU, the uh, Armax one from Safari, they actually provide you a blanking plate. So if you think you've gotten into a situation in a remote location where you might think that this is causing a problem, you can actually disconnect it, put a blanking plate on and the factory, it's not even in the system anymore. So a lot of smart engineering there. So that's the Safari gear. Now, other things I've got in here, I do have an oil catch can. Um, I do, you know, I've, I've done enough research to know that these help, so it's a part of the maintenance cycle. So I do have a, a ProVent oil catch can installed just here. Uh, and one thing, one last thing I'll say about the uh, snorkels. Um, some people might not know this. A lot of it, a lot of you do, but the um, the factory snorkel that comes on a on a Land Cruiser isn't sealed at the airbox level. It doesn't increase. Um, your wading depth for when you're moving through water. Um, it's just a raised air intake. So if you want to increase the wading depth of your vehicle, you have to move to an aftermarket um, snorkel to do that. So, and the Safari R-Max does that. So it, it takes my air intake right up to there. Also on this side of the engine bay, I've got a Red Arc BCDC uh, battery charger here. And we use this um, to keep uh, both of the batteries, the, I've got a main battery under the bonnet here, but I've also got a second bot, uh, battery in the uh, in the cabin. Um, so this is used to charge both of those. Obviously, second battery is getting charged off the alternator through this when it's running, but it also has a solar input, um, and that keeps both batteries uh, topped up uh, when the vehicle's not running. Okay, so now I think it's time to switch over to the other side of the engine bay and look at some of the changes that have been made there. So with the magic of television, and now I'm on the other side of the vehicle. So what we want to look at here in terms of modifications, first of all, I'm just going to kick off and say um, all the 12 volt work on this vehicle has been brought together by custom off-grid solutions. Um, and when you see all the electrical work here and just some of the other stuff around the vehicle, it is really, really top-notch work. Um, not just the way they run the wiring and the quality of the wiring they use, but also the way they think about how in-field maintenance is going to happen. So if you blow a fuse or something goes wrong, um, how are you going to be able to follow and diagnose the system? So you'll see a bit of that as I step through as well. So a uh, big thank you to the guys there. All right, so first and foremost, um, just got one battery under the bonnet. Just uh, that's all the, the 200 series needs to get going. So the 2018 just comes with the, the one. I've stayed with one battery under the bonnet. But importantly, all the extras that have been done have been documented and a plate's been added to the top of the relay box showing what is covered on each of those fuses. So the three up the front here, um, red arc, red arc, and front DC, DC. So, so I've actually got some guidance here as to what each of these, what each of these fuses are doing. The little one that's on the positive terminal, again, side spots, spotlights, etc., brake controller. So very easy to follow. Uh, where all, what all the fuses are doing. I'm sure for those of you that had work done over the years, it's like, you know, a couple of years after you do the work, you go, hmm, what was that fuse for? And what was that fuse for? And you end up chasing things. And when you're out in the desert, um, trying to solve something that's gone wrong, little things like this make a really big difference to your vehicle. So some other things installed here. I've got a coupler tech anti-rust system through to the chassis. This one's got a six pad one because it's a really long, large vehicle. So that's installed and helps with um, helps with uh, reducing corrosion in the in the chassis. Um, just behind it, you won't be able to see it, but just behind it, I also have a secondary fuel filter. I have a diesel care secondary fuel filter. Um, we you know we hear things about sometimes you know fuel, uh, particularly in remote locations, can you know you can run into issues sometimes. So having both the stock a factory fuel filter and a second one just gives me a bit of extra risk management in terms of what's happening with my fuel. So they're the key things under the bonnet. As I said, most of the rest of the things that you have under the bonnet, the stand of the radiator, the cooling, um, et cetera, all, all factory, and they run really well for the trips that I do. All right, so let's take, uh, let's take a look at some of the other areas of the vehicle. Before I start walking around and showing some of the other aspects of the car, I wanted to show you the biggest modification in this vehicle. And we started out with a beautiful 200 series 2018 GXL Land Cruiser, and then we chopped it. We literally cut it just after the second door there. 
and turned it into a dual cab. And we extended the chassis 650 millimeters so that I could put a, a decent sized high quality canopy on the back. And I set the canopy up for touring. And um, that extra chassis length allows me to make sure that I get some of the heavy weight of the canopy over or in front of that axle. So that's really important. So that's a big change to the vehicle. So we'll come in now, I'll talk about the suspension changes and some of the other things that we did um, that go hand in hand with this modification. So I can say it's been absolutely fantastic having this CHOP 200. It, it works really well for off-road touring. All right, so an important part of this vehicle, being a, a, a dual cab CHOP vehicle, um, to get the GVM that we wanted, the 4,490 kilogram GVM, uh, we had to invest in suspension. That was a critical part of getting our engineering for that. And um, it starts, believe it or not, at the wheels. So these Method NV heavy duty wheels are actually rated at 1,650 kilos for each wheel. So each wheel can carry that load. They're an 18 inch wheel. And part of the reason we had to go to an 18 inch, 18 inch wheel is we also had to find a tire that was rated uh, to 1,650 kilograms as well. So we've got Toyo Open Countries here. Um, they're an RT, but what they are under the skin, they're basically an all-terrain tire uh, with a light truck uh, ply, so really heavy, strong tire. We wanted that for the places that we're going, but also it can take that heavy load, so 1,650 kilos. So that's the wheels and tires, but in combination with that, we needed a suspension system that was going to carry the load as well. We've gone with King Shocks. We've actually gone King Shocks with remote reservoirs just to make sure that they've got extra uh, heat absorbing capability. If you're driving a heavy rig like this across corrugations for hours at a time, the suspension's really doing a lot of work. Hand in hand with that, we actually upgraded to the three inch uh, shock absorbers. Again, just being larger, we found that for the heat cycle that we knew we were going to get, it would keep these shock absorbers in their operating range around 60 to 70% of their, their temperature range. Um, particularly when I'm out on rough terrains and, and uh, say, corrugations for hours at time. So King Suspension at the core. And then we've added um, upper control arms, etc., etc., to ensure all the, the draw material was correct. Um, the suspension gives us a uh, two inch, 15 millimeter lift. Um, and combined with the 33 inch tires, that gives me a little extra lift as well. So enough clearance, there's plenty of clearance on the vehicle. Um, but importantly, that suspension is about being able to take the weight while still giving us a really smooth ride. One of the things about the 200 series Land Cruiser, it is a really beautiful ride. And we did want to uh, retain that through the changes that we made. So, uh, and we've absolutely done that. We've done heaps and heaps of long trips and the suspension has absolutely lived up to what we needed it to do. All right, so that's the front suspension. Let's go take a look at the back. All right, so here in the rear of the vehicle, uh, still the same um, suspension componentry. So it's King Shocks. Um, three inch all of that's the same but some other changes back here um, we needed a three ton rating on the rear axle to get the 4490 kilogram gvm so asg 4x4 who built the vehicle um, has actually stiffened the rear axle it's steel plated etc and um, really upgrade, upgraded that strength of that rear that rear axle um, and then combined with the suspension components we've got all come together to give us the uh, the weight rating that we wanted from the vehicle all right, so I just want to come down and look at some of the accessories improvements as we go along the driver's side of the vehicle. So first and foremost, I want to talk about my clear view uh, uh, towing mirrors. I really like the clear view mirrors. I've used them on prior vehicles as well. I'm not, I'm not pulling a big caravan. I'm actually pulling smaller off-road camper trailers, um, but I find the extra vi visibility that the clear views give with the larger mirror really, uh, really comfortable for me and the way I use the vehicle. But also I've got the, uh, the more modern ones, they're actually power fold. So when I turn the vehicle, they've been configured so that when I turn the vehicle off, the mirrors fold in. But I've also got an override button on the dash. So if I'm going through some tight trees, etc., I can actually hit a button and pull the mirrors in. Okay, so in addition to the clear views, um, let's take a look at these uh, side steps. These side steps are a really important part of the vehicle because not only are they side steps, but they're also protection bars. All right, so they're actually made of the same sort of solid steel as the, uh, the side rails on the vehicle. Um, now, a uh, really cool thing that ASG 4x4 did is that they actually extended these sidebars. They cut them, extended them, and then had them re-powder coated um, to go the full length of the body of the vehicle. So when you open this door, you've actually got a protective step all the way along. So that was a really nice addition that they made. Also on this side of the vehicle, 
We've got work lights. Um, and these work lights are really handy. There's heaps and heaps of time we've used them on camp and other situations. So work lights installed there. And I've got my ARB shovel installed up on the, uh, the roof rails up top there. Now, when they do the chop on these vehicles in a chassis extension, um, you'll almost always end up with a toolbox on this side of the vehicle. For my toolbox on this side, I've chosen to have in installed a twin, uh, twin pump ARB uh, air compressor, but also their, uh, their holding tank. And the air tank's really useful because it does allow you to run uh, light power tools and things like that. It'll hold about 120 PSI. Um, but I'm also able to hold my uh, air hoses inside the toolbox as well. So that's all very convenient that that's all tucked in together there. Now, an important part of this as well is that I have air lockers front and rear on the vehicle. So diff locks front and rear on the vehicle. And they're... Um, they're uh, turned on using air from the air compressing system so that all goes together to work together and also this year i had added on uh, arb's air control system which allows you to dial up on a blue an app on your phone using bluetooth a pressure that you want to uh, inflate or deflate tires to i find that really handy because i can i can hook this up to my indeflate i use 40 psi in the front tires and i use 50 psi in the rear tires when i'm on the on the highway um, and with the air control system from ARB, I can basically say 50 psi, please. And with the, indef with the indeflate, have both tyres just automatically up inflate up to that level and stop. So I find that really handy as well. And another improvement I got from ARB for this vehicle um, is an upgraded long-range uh, fuel tank. So I actually had their Frontier tank for the 200 series Land Cruiser installed. Um, and it's a um, it's 185 litre uh, fuel tank. And it replaces the small secondary tank that comes with the 200 series Land Cruiser. So I've got the 90 litre factory tank and then this 185 litre secondary tank to give me a total of 275 litres of diesel in the vehicle. And again, that's fantastic. If you're trying to do a run across the desert, Nice vehicle with lots of equipment in it, with a trailer, etc. It's nice to know that I've got a huge range when I'm doing those big trips. So before I dive into the fit out on the canopy on the driver's side, just a few more things on the driver's side of the vehicle. I use a Rhino Rack Sunseeker awning on this side of the, the vehicle. I've got a wraparound awning on the other side, so I just needed a simple straight awning that came out from this side. So I've got the Rhino Rack awning there. I've also got up on top of the canopy, I've got a 175 watt solar panel, which is for charging the big battery that's inside the canopy, the 200 amp hour battery inside here. But I've also got a smaller 100 watt solar panel up here, which is running through to the Red Arc BC-DC charger in the front of the vehicle. And the 100 amps keeping the, the drive, the main battery, um, and the second battery that I've got inside the cabin, it's keeping those two topped up as well. So making use of the top of the canopy, heaps of solar up there. Um, and just here, if it turns out I want more solar, so say I've had a, a situation where it's rained a little bit on a trip and I want to top up a little bit more solar, the folks at COGS also added solar inputs for me so I can actually put down a solar blanket and run more solar in here. So if I need to top things up in, in remote, as long as I've got sun, I've got plenty of ability to, to charge my batteries. And also, just showing the, uh, the trig point uh, toolbox on this side. So again, toolbox here. This one's a little bit smaller because that's where my fuel filler is. But here I've got my indeflate for doing um, for, for when I'm doing tyres. I've got an extended hose uh, for the air system. So I want to, when I want to do the tyres on the trailer, I've got extra hose, etc. So just some more accessories for our off-road touring inside that toolbox. All right, so looking at the rear of the vehicle here, believe it or not, there's a whole bunch of things that made its way to the rear of the vehicle. Uh, when I originally had the vehicle built, I actually had two wheels on the back, um, which looked fantastic. The pictures are awesome, but uh, it did contribute to a bit of a weight problem. Each of these wheels, just the rim and the tire alone, is 44 kilos, and the bracket that goes onto the back that holds it is about seven kilos. So you're looking at over 50 kilos of weight with each wheel, and uh, it's a heavy rig. That's just how it is for all the things that I want it to do. So I've taken the second one off just to preserve a bit of weight. Now, if I'm not using a trailer, if I'm going to do something that's remote just out of the vehicle with a swag, I've still got it. I can still pop that on the back um, because I don't have the downbore weight of the trailer on the vehicle. So I've got options for how I work with that. Other things that are on the back here. So up the top here, we've got our input, our 240 volt, our AC input 
um, that allows me to run 240 volt into the vehicle and charge that lithium battery that's in the canopy, canopy so that's for fast charge. But I've actually got another one beside it because I've got an inverter inside the canopy, I can run up to 1600 watts of power out. So I can actually plug a regular 240 volt 10 amp lead into there and, and power things, charge things, etc. off the back. They're all weatherproof and, and uh, appropriate for this sort of uh, usage. Above them, I've got a couple of cameras. So I've actually got a rear dash cam on the vehicle um, and it's a, just a traditional sense dash cam, but it also detects um, movement, etc. at night when, um, when people move around the vehicle, so a little bit of security. But the second camera is actually for a digital rear view mirror. I'll show you that in a separate video when I do the inside of the vehicle, but I do have a digital rear view mirror that gives me a nice view out the back of the truck. So a couple of cameras up the back there. I've heard from people recently that you can do both of those in a single camera, which is awesome, but when we built this rig, that was the technology. Other things on the back here, um, I do have work lights added to the to the back of the truck. Those are on the same, uh, I've got a fob for turning all the side lights on. So again, if I'm trying to um, set up at camp, move around, reverse in camp, having extra work lights on the back are very handy. And then an extra thing we did add to this build was a rear winch. So as well as that 12,000 pound carbon winch that I've got in the front, I've also got a 12,000 pound carbon winch on the back, also using the Factor 55 Ultra Hook. As I said, I really like these hooks. They're very flexible for the different types of recovery that you're doing. Now, the reason I got that winch on the back is that again, in remote situations, you don't always have control of where the vehicle is if you get stuck or if you're trying to help somebody else. My thinking was if I've got one on the front and the back, I can recover from that way or I can recover from the front. But importantly, if I'm traveling by myself just with one vehicle, if we get stuck, I can drop the trailer, get this vehicle out, and then I can use this winch to pull the trailer back to me and hook it back up again. So it's all about risk management and making sure I deal with some of the situations that I might get myself into. So let's just talk about some of the features that are on the, uh, the passenger side of the vehicle. Um, I've already talked about the uh, clear view uh, towing mirrors, so assume they're in place. But down this side of the vehicle, I've got Max Trax Extremes mounted up on top. Uh, we've had a special bracket made for them, so it works on the uh, the roof rails that I use up there. I did start out originally with a platform up there, a Rhino platform, but I found that I didn't need the Rhino platform for what I was doing. So I just saved a little weight and just went back to a pair of roof bars. But also attached to those roof bars, the folks at uh, Custom Off Grid Solutions put in some side work lights for me. Now the side work lights are fantastic. The number of times that I've rolled into a campsite or been working on a project with scouts, etc., and we need extra lighting, those lights are awesome. I've got a little remote control for them. I can fire them up. I've got a set on this side. I've got a set on the other side. Also on this side, there's another toolbox. I've talked about how with the build, toolboxes get installed on the side. My toolbox on this side has my uh, lift, my jack, um, but it also has a tire repair kit and a set of jumper leads. I found with this vehicle, with the extra lift and the tires, etc., obviously the factory jack's no good anymore. Um, so I had to get an aftermarket jack. I found that an eight ton bottle jack was spot on. So I've got my bottle jack in there. I've got an ARB tire repair kit, and as I said, a set of jumper leads. So that's tucked away in that, in that uh, toolbox. But also on this side of the vehicle, I've got myself a Drifter rapid wing awning. So that's one of those awnings that sort of wraps around from this side of the vehicle to the back. I find that's great. I've used that out in the desert a few times, you know, hot days, lots of sun, pop that out. Uh, gives me plenty of shade over our kitchen area. Um, if, it's, if it rains, as it sometimes does when I go camping, gives us heaps of coverage under here. But I've also got some walls that attach to that. So there's one time that Lexi and I were camping up in the Victoria High Country just in... Um, in Oz tent bunkers and we were able to put this up, put the walls up, put our bunkers underneath and our whole camp area is just under this corner of the vehicle. And um, and then one more, one more storage box. So I talked about this being a trig point canopy. I also chose the option of the trig point toolboxes and they just pop in the side here. And in my in this toolbox, I keep recovery gear. So I've got uh, dampeners, etc., cetera, uh, chocks, et cetera, in that side toolbox because I want the recovery gear easy to access. So that's an overview of the things down this side of the vehicle. Okay, so let's talk about the fit out of the canopy. I'm going to start with the work that Drifter did for me. So Drifter built a kitchen, uh, which was important for our roadside stops, but they've also built drawers for the other side. Now this kitchen is based on their ute back kitchen. 
Traditionally, it has a front that folds down, but in our configuration, we already had this bench space here. So we wanted to configure it slightly differently. And that's the beauty of the Drifter stuff that they, they make it to order, they custom build all the sizing and they can configure for your use case. So in this kitchen, a couple of small drawers for things like utensils and things like that, and some larger drawers where we keep our, um, our plates and jet boil and, and those sorts of things. But one of the tricks of this kitchen is that these doors are magnetically held in place. So they come out and they actually um, can be used as side uh, tables. I've got some little chains that allow me to just use them as swing down side tables so that we can use them on lunch stops. But I've also got some Snow Peak iron grill tables um, and some legs. And these were sized exactly perfectly to fit into the Snow Peak iron grill table. So they're actually a functional table as well. And inside these areas, you see I've got a Travel Buddy 12 volt oven in here. These are fantastic for cooking meals when you're on the go. So we'll do things like put some uh, sausage rolls or quiches or pies or things like that in there, put it on low. Maybe they've been frozen, probably a little bit higher, go for a drive and uh, they're ready to go for lunch or afternoon tea or dinner, depending on what you're doing. I've actually got up the top here, I've actually got a Snow Peak single burner uh, barbecue that drops into the IGT table as well. So I've got an ability to be able to cook from equipment in here as well. The second, the second cupboard is actually storage. At the moment, it's actually quite empty. I've got my cleaning gear inside one of the Snow Peak bags here. Um, looks like we're good for brekkie though. We've got some porridge. We've got some porridge on board, but normally this is pantry. So we'll put foodstuffs and things like that in that part of the cupboard. So Drifter um, ute back kitchen on this side. In addition to the Drifter ute back kitchen, we've gone for a vertical fridge, an upright fridge. We actually started out this build with a slide out drop down fridge and we did a couple of uh, trips in it and we found that that was a little bit heavy, a little bit cumbersome, a little bit slow. For the sorts of trips we wanted, we wanted more of a bar fridge style. So we've gone for the Dometic 110 litre fridge. And what's fantastic about this, when we roll up to a roadside stop, you can just open up the fridge and everything that you want to access is right there at your fingertips. So it really makes roadside stops convenient. So love that fridge. People do ask about, oh, you know, does it use more power, etc. That's not been my experience. Um, there might be something small in it, but it's not material. We're never chasing power in the battery in this system with this fridge. And just in terms of fit out, something that's really nice here is the bench work at the front. So the trig point canopy has a nice smooth metal base in it, which is fine. But once we've done the fit out, we said, what can we do to really finish off this bench space here? The, the folks at uh, Custom Off Grid Solutions actually hooked up with a uh, kitchen manufacturer that's just nearby them and had uh, Laminex bench work actually made cut to the exact side of the bench and pop that in here. So we've actually got a nice resilient uh, surface here that we can prepare food on, etc. So that's a really nice touch. Additionally, inside the canopy then is the electrical work. So hidden up against the headboard of the canopy, we've got a 200 amp hour Enerdrive lithium battery. It's tucked in beside the fridge there. I've found 200 amp hours is really the sweet spot uh, for fridge systems and things like that. So we can park up for a couple of days and that battery is going to run that fridge for a couple of days in rain and whatever else with no drama at all. But then in addition to the battery, we've got a Victron inverter charger in the system. Um, we've put 175 watt solar panel on the roof of the canopy that feeds into that system so it's continuously getting charged there every time you drive that Victron's helping to uh, charge the lithium battery so that tops it up in addition to that we actually had uh, a 240 uh, inlet set up and I'll show you that in a in a picture in a moment but there's actually a 240 volt inlet on the back of the vehicle, a 15 amp one. So if we've been out and about and we're really down on power and we want to charge up, if we can get to somewhere that's got 240, we can smash 240 in and it, it charges at about 50 amps per hour. So you really can fill that 200 amp hour battery quickly if you need to. So really good electrical work there. Uh, circuits for the, um, the buddy oven, etc., all in there. And I'll show you a little bit more of how that looks on the other side of the canopy. All right, so now let's take a look at the driver's side of the canopy. And this is almost the, the happiest place of the, the vehicle for me. Um, now, importantly, drift to fit out here. So three drawer system on this side, but we've made sure we've left a lot of storage area just open for different things that we might be able to, to different things that we might take on a trip. So lots of open storage up top, but then three drawers. Now the rear drawer, 
um, made that the smallest because that's behind the axle, so make sure that that doesn't have too much weight in it. But I also had Drifter make one of their slide-out tables. So underneath the drawer is this table, slide it out part way, and you've got a bench that actually comes out the whole way and has legs underneath it so you can set it up as a standalone table. And um, that's an absolute epic feature of, um, of Drifter's drawer systems, those tables. Now, these drawers are where I keep things like tools, spare parts, uh, first aid kits, etc. So I, I knew I would have that gear with me all the time and I wanted them tucked away in drawers neatly and tidy so I'm not trying to fish plastic boxes out and trying to find stuff. Everything's in a place where it belongs. Inside a drawer won't move around, it's all secured. So that's an important part of this fit out. I really love that. As I say, it's lined, lights here. I'm just going to turn the internal lights on actually so you can see what this, uh, what this looks like when it's lit up. Um, so what I'm going to do is, um, it's just getting a little bit late in the day here, it's starting to get a bit dark, so wouldn't it be great if I could see inside my canopy? No problem, when COGS did the fit out, they made sure not only did they, they give me the lights up here on the doors, but they've also given me some lights inside the canopy. So there's actually a control panel inside the canopy. I just touched cabin lights, now I've got some lights there. And I've popped my light on on the door. So really easy. To get, to get to my lights, nice control systems there. Up inside the canopy here, I've actually got some internal 240 volt sockets. So if I wanna charge something that needs 240, I can put it inside the canopy, close the door. That's all hooked up to the, to the central locking of the vehicle so I can have things inside my canopy on power, no drama. You'll see tucked up just in the back there, you might see a little bit of blue. Um, that's where my Victron inverter charger box is up against the wall there. Um, and I'll also, I'll also do a little bit of a close-up because there's another one of those little panels that shows you where all the fuses are. And that's, again, just one of those nice things that um, Custom Off-Grid Solutions does when they do their electrical fit-outs. That's all tucked up there. And we'll also show you there's actually a signature board in there so the folks that built the vehicle and built out the canopy pop that up there. So, drifter drawers, all nicely lined, lighting, etc. All the control systems up here against the wall. And even just, just a little bit of finished trim here. There was just a little bit of the uh, floor of the awning that was open. And the, um, the kitchen guys did up some laminate, uh, some laminated board for us there as well. So it brings it all together really nicely. So, love this canopy, heaps of room. All the things we need all the time are in here and tucked away neatly. And then you saw the kitchen, um, you'll saw the kitchen on the other side. Cheers. All right, everyone. So that's a, that's a walk around the outside of our, our Chopped 200 Series Land Cruiser, um, sort of giving you an overview of the things. But if you've got any questions at all, just pop them in the comments below and we'll, um, we'll either address them in the comments or I plan on publishing a whole bunch more uh, specific content around the things that are built into the vehicle. So as I said, if you've got questions, just fire away. But um, that's our touring rig, very deliberately set up for long, long distance uh, and out into the desert type work. And uh, I'll see you again. Cheers.